So tell us about the show and your character. Uh, the show, BBC America's Intruders, is a fascinating, chilling, paranormal psychological tour. Um, it sort of deals in the realm of the theme of immortality and uh, the, the existence of a kind of a 1% that instead of geopolitical power being their main aim, it's living forever and controlling some form of immortality, uh, sort of at the expense of ordinary people. Um, and my character is uh, Amy Whelan. I'm married to Jack Whelan, who is our sort of leading man, John Sim, who kind of takes the audience through the story through his perspective. He, he is a novice at this whole situation and these strange events and these strange, powerful, dangerous people. Uh, but I start to act very strange and exhibit all these odd behavior patterns that I've never exhibited before. You'll see this in the pilot. Like, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm listening to a kind of music that I never liked, dancing to it in a kind of arcane style. Um, and I'm obviously in the grip of a very painful internal struggle. Like, you see me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of always sad and kind of broken wing bird. Like, but you don't know what I, I can't communicate. I can't say what's going on with me. And then I go missing. And Jack starts to look for me just as an old high school buddy of his comes to find him and say, hey, there are some strange things going on involving this murder and these people, and I think somehow your wife is mixed up in it. And so he doesn't know if I'm having an affair or what is going on, but he goes on this hunt to find me and find out what's happening, and that's how we begin. And then there's, there's the James Frain character who's a kind of agent, kind of a covert agent who performs various kind of wet work and uh, very dangerous, but everyone in the story is not exactly as they seem in the beginning. All of them have another side. So, whereas James seems like a stone-cold killer, after a while, his character, whose name is Richard Shepard, starts showing this humanity. Um, Jack, Leland, John Sims' character, seems like the everyman, like a very sweet, reasonable person, but as the story goes on, the dark but part of him starts coming to the surface, and I have like all kinds of spoilers associated with my character, so I can't really talk, but I have a lot of duality and range to the role, which was so great for me to play, such a great challenge. I mean, I had some things to do in this story that I've never had to do, which were so interesting and so hard, um, but I loved it. I mean, it, it was amazing that, you know, in television, my first real participation in a full series, you know, I've guested on things before, but I've never been in a series before, I had this experience that was kind of deeper and harder and more challenging and more rewarding than so many of the films that I've been involved with. And, and I'm, I'm kind of loving this new sort of cable format of like the eight to ten part series where you have this intense ride along with these characters. You get enough time to explore the depths of their characters and the storyline can really go interesting places, but not so much time that it thins out and peters out and the plot gets thin. So it's, it's really intense. Like, I, I want to binge watch the whole thing. Like, when I see the first two episodes, I've only seen the first two, and I now have the third sent to me in my inbox today, but I haven't had time to watch it because I just flew in this morning. But I just want to sit there and be able to watch the entire thing on DVR. Like, okay, what's the next one? You know, because I am drawn in. It's not even what I remember. Like, when I watch it, I'm like, this is so creepy. <gasps> What's happening? <laughs> so. Okay. so it's the show is like a paranormal esque and it's kind of darker. How is set life? Do you guys have fun? What do you do? We have as much fun as possible when you're doing really dark scenes. Like sometimes the scenes are so dark that you just have to get through them. Like there was one where I'm lying on the floor in a pool of blood, crying and sobbing in pain. And that <laughs> that was a day I just wanted to get past. Um, but uh, we do have a lot of fun with each other. Um, Glenn Morgan is like this secret comedian, kind of. Like, he's, he's got a very dry wit, but he's always kind of making jokes and he's always got some witty view on something. Um, Ed Sanchez, Eduardo Sanchez, the other one who did uh, the Blair Witch Project in our first four episodes, the director, uh, he is a really warm, personable guy. And He's always got a smile on his face, and so he kind of kept the mood light even when we're doing the darkest of topics. So, yeah, we did have fun. Awesome. Thank you. You talk about challenges with this character. What specific challenges did you have when preparing for this role? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> there was just a lot of differing things that I had to do to prepare for this role. Okay. And I had to be ready to really t take myself to places I hadn't been before. Um, if you look at my filmography, 
most of the characters I play are almost immediately simpatica, kind of accessible, good eggs, right? They're kind of, yeah, she's a good person. Like, you know right away, yeah, yeah, you know, she's likable, she's good, she's not really, she's not cold or she's not capable of evil or whatever. In this story, I kind of run the range of human behavior and, and get to play stuff that is far stronger and darker and more Machiavellian than anything I've ever played but also tragic and vulnerable and, and, and in love. And, and there's this really amazing confluence of, of things I had to do. Um, I also had to learn several, well, not several languages, but I had to speak in several languages in the story. I think if you've seen the extended trailer, you see a little bit of where I'm speaking Russian, where I'm in the bed and I'm, I'm doing this thing. And I'm saying in Russian, this is not my... This is not my country house. This is not my dacha. Like, <laughs> and and he's freaking out because he's never heard me speak Russian before. Um, and there was more. There's more Russian dialogue to come. There's there's other languages, and, and that was challenging just then to make that seem seamless. You know, because even the most fluent of people in another language sometimes hard, find, find, find it hard to act in this language. So that was an interesting challenge. Do you, sorry, Russian? Do you find yourself remembering the phrases that you say later? Is it just like? One day done. No, I remember some of them. Yeah, yeah. I had actually worked in a movie um, in Russia. I shot a movie called uh, Leningrad about the siege of Leningrad during World War II, and in that, I had to speak some Russian. And I was around Russian people for like half a year doing that, so I uh, I did pick up a little bit of Russian while I was there, enough to say that I don't speak Russian. Yan ya yaba yuparuski. which means I don't understand. <laughs> Can you talk, are you allowed to talk about um, any of the episodes coming up? Like, what can you tease about maybe the first episode or the first two episodes? Well, you're going to see the first episode tonight if you come to our screening, and then we're going to show the whole thing. So, uh, well, in the first episode, I kind of disappear. So, uh, you know, my character, you're going to be left wanting more. You're going to say, what, what, what is she doing? Why is she doing that? Oh, where'd she go? Is she cheating on him? What's happening? Um, <coughs> there's some very disturbing things involving a cat. Um, there's uh, a lot of violence from Mr. James Brain. A lot. It's not, you know, although there is a child in the show, it is not a show for children, I can tell you that. Uh, Miss Millie Brown has a very challenging role herself. Um, and uh, you will be left with more questions than answers in the first episode, but that's how it should be, because it's supposed to be kind of like a little trail of clues that hooks you, and then you're going to follow down the rabbit hole. And by the end of the season, you will have many answers, although not all. I, I still have questions. I, I, I want to know more about certain aspects of it, but you'll certainly know a ton more than you do at the beginning, and that's how it's meant to be. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.